G'day, this is Steve Woodworking Masterclass. Welcome to the workshop and welcome to the fourth part of the sixth and final box in the Marta B pencil case collection, where we're making a veneered pencil case very similar to this. What we've done so far is made all the components, veneered them and brought them up to shape. So what we've got now is a top track for the slide uh, lid to fit into. There is the top part of the box with the base glued on and the bottom part of the box with the base glued on. And just at the end of last episode, I made a dummy sliding lid up and a template. So the, the dummy sliding lid was to check the template. And just to recap, which if you want to know how we got this, either watch the previous episode or you can check it out on YouTube there and that'll show you how we go through the entire process. But the way I made this up was I got an outline of this shape here and what I wanted was the sliding lid just to fit inside that recess, which I did. But seeing this is veneered, we don't want it to be the same size as, for example, it was in this box, which is a solid timber lid. We're actually going to add a little bit. So if I had it the same size as this recess here and then put veneer on, it wouldn't go into the track. So I, with a spoke shave, took a little bit off each side or the other thing you could do if you feel comfortable and confident enough, go on a router table with a straight router bit and maybe take a quarter of a mil off each side or half a mil off each side and then just play around. And then to make sure that I had a nice fit, I got some scrap bits of the veneer I'm actually gonna veneer the top with. And with double-sided tape, I put it on the chamfered edges and placed it in there to make sure it was a good fit. So that brings us all up to speed. All the components are made. We've just got to veneer the top, which I'll show you how to do in a tick, and trim this up and start putting it together. First things first. This slide, if you're happy with the way your top template worked out, take the slide and now we've actually got to glue it onto the top section of the pencil case. If you like at this stage, and in fact I think I'll do it, I'm just gonna get all these edges off so everything's square to the case itself. That includes the back. Now I'm gonna go over and use a router table for that. And you could use a bandsaw, you could use a hand plane, but ostensibly this project is routers. So I'll go over and use a flush trimming bit and it looks a lot like that. In fact, that's the one I'm going to use. This one is a Promac router bit. And the reason I like these is they have a nice large amount of blade on them and a good bearing. Whereas in the past when I've used uh, less expensive ones, if you look there, we'll compare the two, there is hardly any cutting edge on this one compared to this one here. This also is a Promac bit and you can see how healthy the cutting edge is on there. Now that's not dead square. If you look really close, you can still see glue lumps there. I'm not worried about that at the moment. I just want to get it down to a rough size and I'm going to finish that once I've got it all glued together. So, We'll work on the top in a sec. Get your slide and the top section and position it so the inside of this lip just comes on the inside of the top part of the box. And you'll notice we've got a nice bit hanging over the edge, which I explained on the previous box uh, that we did the solid timber one, the reason for that. And now glue it up. And again, I'm not gonna use high glue. I'm gonna use a fairly quick setting glue. A couple of reasons. One, I don't want it 
squishing out everywhere and this has got to go off fairly quick because the longer it takes to dry the more chance it has of actually moving. So that's why I'm putting a bead on there, lining it up. Now if you've got your top bit as one complete unit as I've got there, you'll find if it lines up in the front, it'll line up the back. So are you happy with it? Put it to one side. I'm not going to put that in a clamp because the chance of it actually moving when you tighten the clamp up, it can slip. So I'm just putting my now world famous heavy weights straight on the top of it. Now you should have one piece of timber left over of quarter inch with veneer on one side. This is going to be your lid. If you've made your template the way in that previous video shows or also I mentioned last episode, Now's the time to cut it out. Again, double-sided tape. You can use brads if you haven't got any of this, or very fine staples. The reason I don't like using that, it does leave holes in your job. And I just put double-sided tape on the template itself. Unlike the slide, this time you have the veneer facing upwards when you put the template on it. Press it down, again I'll use the vise, I find it gives me much better adhesion if I put some pressure on it. I'm going to trim this fairly close on a bandsaw and then I'll go back to the router and I think I'll use two stages in this. I'll use that profile cutter I just used to square these ends up, then I'll change the cutter back to that mitre shaped blade because I want to get a mitre on here which is going to be the male version that slides into the slot on top that we just glued on here. Now I could do it in one piece, I could just put it on the router now and do the mitre cut in one go but sometimes you can get tear out, sometimes things go wrong whereas if you take it step by step and make it three steps instead of one step you're guaranteed to have a much nicer job and it's safe for using the machines as well. So over to the bandsaw, clean this up, profile it, and then I'll put the mitre on.